Hi, we're Nick and Megan, the O'Kellys, and this is our home, Clarity, for the past four and a half years. We had a beautiful sail up from Florida, and now we're in the Chesapeake Bay. We're hauling out at Zimmerman Marine to get a few projects done. We'll also fly home to Portland, Oregon to get some family time. You all know me, you have to do that. And make a big announcement at the end of the video. Oh, wow. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> What's all this noise you're making? <laughs> I'm doing my favorite job in the world, which is taking the mainsail off. We have two issues. First of all, we're getting a new mainsail, and that means we have to measure the old one so that the new one is the exact same dimensions. The other reason we're taking this off again is because our stack pack cover it's getting a little bit raggedy so my lovely camera operator is gonna have a little sewing to do you're multi-talented the fabric is literally worn thin so all my seams held from the last repair job but there is a hole that's been worn in the fabric and i have a lot of um, reinforcing material so i'm gonna reinforce it and I gotta dry it. Well, keep in mind this thing weighs about 300 pounds. And since it's wet and has bags of water in it, it probably weighs a little bit more. Uh, Precision Sales uses an online form for filling out to get all these measurements down. And then with all the numbers in place, they can design the sale and then ship it direct. So critical to getting uh, things right with a new sale is to get the measurements from the old sale right. And there's a couple ways of doing that. We're gonna measure the P and E from our boom and our mass to make sure that the hoist is all proper. But to really get things dialed in, we're gonna measure the leech, the luff, the foot, but we're also gonna measure the distances between the cringles. The, the reef cringles are on the leech of the sail, and we're also gonna get the reef tacks and get the exact distances. That way we know that the boom angle is proper and correct, not just at full hoist, but at each reef point. <laughs> Catamaran sails take a lot of abuse. Part of the reason for that is that when a swell or a wave hits the boat, it doesn't yield. On a monohull, a gust hits you and the boat goes Beep. Or if a wave hits you, it goes Beep. On a catamaran, all that force goes directly into the rig and directly into the sail. So the main sail especially has to be extra tough. And there's two ways of doing that. First of all, you can just get a heavier fabric all the way around. Probably the minimum for a catamaran would be 11 ounce Dacron. Uh, Ullman with this sail, uh, which we'll show you here it's got two layers on the leech so the main body of the sail is it looks like eight ounce maybe it's even seven ounce, seven eight nine ounce cloth but then they've doubled the thickness for the entire leech and then they've put extra strong patches probably the same doubling material on around all of the uh, reefing cringles and the tacks so that there's more reinforcement where all the stress is when the sail is reefed. Uh, with our new sails, I'm not sure whether we're gonna do the, the doubled material or a single heavier cloth. We may go down to a single ply cloth, but boost its weight, maybe nine ounce or so. We'll see how the designers uh, ferret that out.
All right, we're getting ready to get hauled out of the water here at Zimmerman Marine. Oh, always makes me a little bit nervous when we're hauling out. Looks like they made some modifications to the trailer here. Look at all these supports. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, our H5 auto props have got a uh, loose blade on each side, once again. So uh, I'm gonna have a, a good talking to uh, King Props and Brunton, but uh, this is this has gone on long enough. Ah, <sighs> now I'm just gonna relax here in the shade. I'm gonna wait here while they power wash it and put us in our new home. And then we will get back on board and continue our process of packing up. It's pretty nerve wracking to see your house up in the air. And it's funny, it reminds me of this dream. I've had it several times where I'm on the boat driving down uh, one of the streets of my childhood. So <laughs> it's funny to watch this happen and, and think of, oh, okay, this is where my subconscious uh, gets that imagery. <laughs> But they're doing a great job and uh, we are out of the water, so nice and slow. Well, I'm, I'm puzzled by what's coming, what's coming took, loose. Uh, Dr. Roderick Sampson, he's our prop guy. This is who we bought our H5 auto props from. Okay, so auto prop, when you design an auto prop, it's, it's different to every possible propeller on the market. And I'll tell you for why. You normally design a propeller to achieve hold speed at wide open throttle. You set the pitch and it's cast in bronze, it's cast in stones, as it were. Auto prop works differently. You know, once you're, once you're sailing and you've locked off the engine, they're going to point forward and then as you start to bring up the helm, you're just going to get one click, so you're going to get the correct pitch. I understand the principles. Be, it's the reliability I, is the issue here, yeah. Well, I, I'm just scratching my head because I don't feel that we're abusive. I feel like we're, if anything, we're one of the easier people on, okay. on our gear. So, I'll take this on the chin and I will get these props back and fitted on the boat. Uh, so you sent them back to England, you got them all burnished on the inside, yep. all that stuff. I sent them back to England. And then... Uh, I've fully rebuilt them from ground up. Fully rebuilt. I've ripped it completely apart. So you asked me why they came on loose and and the, the bearing tracks did have some little uh, rumble marks in from the bearings, brinolin marks. There's an internal spline, it has a rubber dowels around it, so that's why the hub's so chunky. And those, um, it's, a, it's a, called Vulcan and Rods, there's 12 of them, goes around it, and those had started to decay, and two or three of them had collapsed, so there was play in them. Mm -hmm. And I think, given what I've seen, you know, uh, it, it is possible that that was contributing to some of your vibration. So Brunson's were very kind to pay, the, pay for the, um, the Brinolin and the cost of the UK. I've covered the cost of the, um, I basically did a full rebuild, stripped it down as, as far as you can possibly go. So we took the hub apart, we took the blades apart, it's got new bearings, new hubs, new races, new tracks. They're, they're factory new, so they cool. shouldn't have any problems now. Nice. But I mean, they do have, you know, it does need service. All right, so I rebuilt these three times. What was I possibly doing wrong here? Where would somebody else who's servicing their own props possibly be going wrong? Okay. When you service your own props, there's a couple of things that you can look out for. I mean, the main thing is when you're tightening it, I spend probably half an hour playing with the blades when I'm tightening it. So I will, I will get the blades to fall. I have a little torque meter off a bicycle. And um, once I've done that, it says 16 Newton meters, 18 Newton meters, um, about 13 foot pounds or something. And my blades kind of fall like this, quite slow. So it's, 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 I guess it's what, six years experience of doing this sort of thing, you're taking them apart. But I really, really spend, no word of a lie, about half an hour just tightening. Most people just tighten them, put the tabs, go and tighten it, bung. I did take my time. Okay. But I did not use a torque wrench to do the retaining nut. Mm -hmm. I used the retaining nut to try and find Thankfully, you don't have to rely on my crummy job of explaining things here. Rod is literally a doctor in propulsion. I didn't even know that existed. And he's a YouTuber. So if you want more information on propellers, check out the King Propulsion YouTube channel. Rod went way above and beyond to take care of us here. And I don't think it's just because we have a YouTube channel. He's just a good guy. Yes, 
so we're gonna get rid of this beast. Disconnect it from the bottom, which will be uh, a bit of a task. Then we'll have them hoisted out using their forklift thing. And then this baby's on the market? <laughs> Not the boat. You can own a piece of Clarity vintage gear. <laughs> I think the only case where you really still should consider having a gen set is if you're gonna be running air conditioning like like all the time. If you're running air conditioning all the time, you might as well get a gen set because you just can't make that power fast enough otherwise. Now I gotta disconnect the electrical and the fuel and the raw water. <laughs> that sounds easy. Yeah, 10 or 15 minutes should be done. What'd you call her, Bessie? Bessie. Yeah, Bessie is a, she's been a good old girl for us. But uh, once you've got the housing on this thing, basically this entire compartment is taken up with either the batteries, the access to the batteries, or this gen set. Well, I'm getting a little bit of waxing in before the heat comes in. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Guys are trying to figure out which is the best way to orient the boom to get the generator out. So I think they're going to go from the, the front. And uh, it's pretty exciting. All right, we're pulling this baby out. These guys have the right tools for the job. We're going to pick it and uh, hopefully get it out with banging, without banging into the boat too much. Yeah, so there's lots of room down here. We could uh, put sails, paddle boards, the uh, life raft. I'm gonna do some cleanup first though. All right, it's, uh, it's go day. Just putting the final touches on a couple things, putting the boat away. What are you doing, Nick? Oh, we got this nagging uh minor minor oil seal leak at the front seal i gotta take the pulley back off measure it so we can get the right one to put back in show us your muscles my muscles yeah my muscles are atrophying <laughs> and i'm gonna put all the covers on the instruments and the winches and i've taken down the jib sheets because we took the jib down so we're in good shape we got a lot of baggage for six weeks Hopefully a lot of that will stay in Portland. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy how hard it is to stay minimalist on a boat because we've been here on our boat for four and a half years, which is the longest that Nick and I have ever lived together in a place. So it's not a surprise that we have this much stuff. It's just, uh, we need to stop accumulating. Thank you, Nika. You're welcome, Nick. Oh no, you're not so waiting. <laughs> You can't escape the camera. You can't escape the camera. What are you doing? I'm deeply immersed in a video about changing out our VHF radio. <laughs> Getting ready to take off out of Charlotte. Next stop, Portland, Oregon. bath this morning.
So exciting, we're, we're on our way to our first business meeting. We're having a sit down. We're going over our, our notes, our plan on what we're gonna say, just the perfect opportunity and the perfect moment. No, we're, we're gonna make it up as we go along. This company roasts coffee beans. And if there's one thing we're as passionate about as sailing and cruising, it's gotta be coffee. So, we're gonna try and get into the coffee business. So yeah, we're really excited. They've been in the business 35 years here in Oregon. This is where it all began. There's a lot of history here. And they've kept it in the family all this time. We have one coffee that we is a single origin that we roast darker, and we roasted it today. It smells so good, I wanna eat it. This is the best coffee we've ever had. Let's share it. Mm, it's a sign. <laughs> what are the coffee. chances? We also are hiring fresh roasted coffee. Got me a model here. Look at you. Thanks to Heidi and Franny's garage, I have this nice hat. Are they sponsoring this this <laughs> this photo? They're this so video? worried about my ear that they sent me some really cool hats. They're so sweet. You look so cute. Thank you. I should take you out on the town. How Let's about some tacos? Let's go get tacos. Reporting live from Mississippi Street. Some of you guys have wondered where are these I Love Taco t-shirts come from. It's Porcino Taqueria. This is uh, our brother-in-law and my sister's uh, taqueria is here in Portland, Oregon. And they stoke us out with I Love Taco shirts every time we come back. So that's the origin story of the I Love Taco shirts. I'm going in. It's going in. Mm, back to the source. Going back to the Porcino. Because it's pork and milk. How is it? Jane's having the ceviche. She'll only get a little bit bigger. I want, make milk? I want to go. We could make milk from the goat, and we could make Clarity cheese. Clarity special goat. Oh, I love it. That's the business model right there. Anywhere else. All right, that's our special announcement. We're doing goat cheese. We're getting on goat cheese. We're gonna do goat boat cheese. Goat boat cheese. You've heard it here first. Goat goat cheese. <laughs> 